Is it a gun that sucks balls? I'm the farting demon in this relationship. <laughs> I'd be an awesome rich person. You're both just an exactly. embarrassment. God, I'm awesome today. We're talking Tom Hanks and his vehicle. Yeah, I had my finger in my mouth waiting for you to finish. You gotta get four balls or something? Like dick piercing? <laughs> no, you know damn well I'm fucking that demon. It's still sexy. <laughs> How could that be close and not be right? Yeah, I'll just kill some random dude. His wishes a blowjob. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another Plotty Time mini So This week, just me, Papa Scotch here, and I'm gonna talk about a topic... Uh, sort of similar to a previous mini so we did, but not exactly. It's just a different thing. What I'm talking about today is game sharing. I did do a mini so not too terribly long ago in regards to video game piracy, but uh, video game sharing apparently is different, although I feel like it's the same thing. Well, you know, we're going to get into it, and how about you guys decide? Now, with video game piracy, what I'm talking about, what I refer to, if, if I'm not being clear enough, is that with computer games, it was a big thing with computer games, you know, back in the day. Um, it's still a big thing. But uh, someone buys a game or gets access to the game. They rip the game. They put it on the internet for you to download. You don't pay a fucking dime. And now you have the game. That's piracy, is ripping it from a real source, someone who paid for it, or maybe you rented it and ripped it, whatever. And then giving it away, selling it, basically acquiring the game for free through illegal means. Now, game sharing, however, it's it's kind of in the same camp, but it's come to mean something different. With game sharing, the idea is that you have a game you bought, you paid for, but you want to share that with other people within your home. I'm going to go through this to hopefully help clarify, but I want to talk about uh, starting with a, a story that had come out recently. And this kind of got the the idea with piracy going and with game sharing and how they're different. Uh, it was reported a while back, uh, maybe a month or two ago, that people were getting banned from the PlayStation service entirely because they were selling or buying PlayStation Plus library games. All right. So to give you a little bit of background, PlayStation 5, in order to make it a little bit more alluring because they didn't have many launch titles, they still don't, which is a problem, but... They basically had this thing called the PlayStation Plus Collection. This is different than your PlayStation Plus monthly games. This is different than PlayStation Now. But conceptually, what it means is that they would pick a certain amount of games, certain PlayStation 4 games that were big hits or first parties or whatever they were, and they would be available to people that had a PlayStation 5 and then could play them backwards through backwards compatibility. So, say you got a PlayStation 5, for whatever reason, on ge the last generation on PS4, you missed the God of War. God of War. Uh, you could get it for free through the PlayStation Plus collection, but all you needed was an active PlayStation Plus membership. See, there's Last of Us. I know the God of War was one. I forget. I don't have the list in front of me. Days Gone, I think, is in there. But the idea being that you would have access to all these free PlayStation 4 games if you bought and logged in with a PlayStation 5. And that's the key word, logged in. You ha In order to activate this service... Even if, if you had a PlayStation Plus account and you had a PlayStation 4, you did not have access to these free games. You had to log in on a PlayStation 5, showing that you had a PlayStation 5, and then with your existing collection, these games would be unlocked and you can go download them and save them to your library or whatever. So the issue and the problem that some people were doing uh, was that they would basically sell access to the PlayStation Plus collection to people on PlayStation 4. So what they were doing was they'd go on eBay or wherever... Uh, and say, hey, I'm selling access. It costs X amount of money. I'm not going to get into the details of how much it costs. You probably shouldn't be doing this because you can get banned permanently. And I know I'd be fucking pissed if I lost all those trophies I acquired, right? Because that's why we're doing this for trophies, not for fun to relax. What are we assholes? So I could get banned. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to look into it. I'm not taking that chance. But the idea is that these people would, quote unquote, buy access from a real person with a PlayStation 5. The person with the PlayStation 5 would then log into their account using their credentials. That's it. And then all of a sudden, those games are unlocked in the store. So if you have a PlayStation 4, you could go into the PlayStation Store and download all those games from the PlayStation Plus collection for free. I, When I first heard about this, I was a little surprised because a lot of these games are on the older side. I don't know if there's a game there that costs more than $20 right now. Uh, more or less if you buy it used. Uh, or you wait for a sale. Uh, there was nothing that was released recently that you're like, oh, it's still eighty bu or forty bucks or whatever. So it didn't really make sense to me because 
a lot like uh, for me or someone you know who can who has the means uh i played all the games i wanted to out of this thing i didn't purchase or really get any use out of any of them because uh, the ones i wanted to play i already played and the other ones i don't think i'll even get to because the backlog is so goddamn big um by the way just a side note i am enjoying i i know i'm bitching about the fact that there's no must-have game for the playstation 5 and there's no reason to absolutely have it right now but i will say that i am enjoying this lull to go through the back order uh the, the backlog of games I have that I never even got to on PlayStation 4. Um, I don't know what's next, but I think I'm going to fuck around with Doom Eternal and finally play through that. Anyway, so these people who are selling it or receiving it or both got permanently banned from PlayStation. And I thought that was a really stupid way to do it, but it opened up a whole other conversation on game sharing and what it is. I, I'm not going to go into the details exactly of how you set this up on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. But what I will say is the point of all this, the reason some kind of game sharing exists, is so that if you were to, say, buy a game from the store, we'll just use God of War again. Say it wasn't free. Now, you know, let's use a PlayStation 5 game. Let's say... Uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising. Say you bought Immortals from the PlayStation Store. All right, now imagine this scenario. Imagine you are dad or older brother or older sister, whatever, you're an older sibling. You bought this game. Your parents bought you this game. They expect you to share with your other siblings, right? So maybe all the other siblings have their own accounts. Uh, so the idea would be the game, the reason the game sharing exists on PlayStation 5 is so that if a household bought it, and then someone else logged into the PlayStation, they could also play it. it it's an idea, because it's kind of an asshole move. Like, if three of the kids want to play a game, you have to buy it three times? Fuck that noise. Uh, this is a system or issue I haven't run into, because I'm the only person on my PlayStation account that plays it at all. So I haven't really run into this, but uh, people were mad. So they're, this is referred to as game sharing, and this is acceptable through PlayStation's means. Now, the other idea is you could log into other person's, like, PlayStations with your account. Uh, this is a pretty standard thing. This is going over to someone's house, uh, maybe borrowing a PlayStation from someone, whatever. I, and By the way, I am talking all in the means of PlayStation because that's what I have. That's what I researched. I'm sure this also applies to PC and also applies to Xbox. But for the moment, I'm talking about PlayStation game sharing. So, And then I'm going to get into the ethical questions, too, in a second, which will expand to any platform. But for PlayStation, game sharing on PlayStation 5 is a lot easier than 4. Uh, in 4, you had to basically, in order to share games with someone else, whether it's by legal or illegal means, you had to basically log into their PlayStation, set yourself up as the primary on their PlayStation, and then you could download, or go into their account, download the games to their PlayStation, and then you could then play them. Uh, it wasn't worth it, especially if you lost online because there was no way to validate it. Uh, I will. I would never try that myself. Obviously, that would be wrong. But from what I heard from everyone, there's a lot of inconsistencies with online and authenticating and just issues. So, didn't really seem worth it to me, especially when I had so many games to play, and especially now there's so many free to play games that you could just use to kill time till one goes on sale. Like you don't have to buy it. Like create. So it does. It doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. People would get banned for that too. Uh, so let's talk about then the ethics behind game sharing. Uh, I think that it was a very good step forward for PlayStation to basically say, because um, the way PlayStation's moving is they want you to buy exclusively from the store. Uh, they don't have to uh, use first party or third party production, basically to sell copies of the game. Uh, the idea would be that uh, through any industry, you want to get your product to the people. You want them to fork over their money for the product with the least amount of overhead as possible. And if you don't have to print a physical copy, uh, then, you know, it's you're cutting out the middleman. And this is also a good reason and a good explanation to why GameStop is failing. Now, as we said before, the official plotty time stance for GameStop is fuck those middlemen for screwing over people for so long and then having the balls to say, oh, I thought our goodwill with the people, you know, they'd, they'd help us out. No, fuck you. You've been screwing over people with returns forever. Um, I'm sorry to all the people that lost their jobs, but 
as a corporation, you can go fuck yourself. Uh, so fuck the middleman. Uh, secondly, so you're trying to get your product to the people with the least amount of overhead. Skipping the middleman does that, making everything all digital. And this is the way they want to move. This is why you are getting a PlayStation and Xbox new generation with a disk drive for physical media and without for digital media. Um, it's going to raise all kinds of problems in the future. And a lot of that has to do with basically retro gaming and the people who are out there doing ROMs and rips, not necessarily to steal games, but to preserve them. Because, uh, you know, this it's kind of like the early days of film as well. People made movies. Uh, they screened them to some people, shoved them in a closet. That was the end of them. And then we saw this is like the early days of film. We're talking like, you know, 1890 to 1940, because uh, 40 World War II happened, and we lost a lot of amazing, experimental, historically relevant films to World War II because they were the films were made on silver nitrate. They were blown up, and they caught on fire hard. Like the the film used to be extremely flammable. Now it's much more, much less flammable. But the point being, this was the only copies, the only way to get these movies, and they died. So basically, these ROMs, these historians, these people are trying to preserve the history of gaming back them up, save them, put them in some kind of digital space where they'll never die, and that way forever we can look back at games and talk with about them with historical value. So I'm fine with those people. The people who just steal games, that's a whole other can of worms. I went over that in piracy. I'm not going to get to it too much. But the point I'm getting at is that eventually all games are going to be digital, uh, physical media games. Physical media games still work the same way. Uh, you can buy a game on a disc, you can finish it, you can uninstall it, or you can keep playing it. But basically, when you buy a game on a disc on PlayStation, you have to have it in the PlayStation in order to play it. Uh, this also applies with PlayStation 4 games on the PlayStation 5. If you have the physical media, you have to put it in in order to make it work. I'm fine with this on a technical level. I'm fine with this because I can still hand over a game to someone else, see if they want to borrow it. Uh, or I can buy a used physical copy of a game and play it. So... I think that's reasonable to still treat that like a regular physical media. Uh, game sharing, a lot of the time, specifically when I'm talking about in this context, is with digital media and playing it on multiple PlayStations or accounts. So, PlayStation, like I said, they listened to the people. They decided to make game sharing a little bit easier so that at least within your house, um, if, if the head of the household buys it, all the kids can play it or whomever has an account in that house can play it. And I think that's reasonable, and I think that's fair, and I think you're you're doing more goodwill for your fan base than anyone at GameStop ever did for their fan base. So it shows that they listen and care. Now, are people going to try to exploit it? Yes, of course. Now, this is where we get into the ethical conversation of it, because is it ethical to do game sharing? I think, I think it is to the point where... It's it's such a gray area because the the way I've been describing it with the head of the household and everybody on in the house playing it, I think is great and that's fine. But then on the other account, people are going to abuse it. Like if I sign into my friend Bob's account and Bob signs into my account, then we could just download each other's games from the store and play them on our PlayStation 5s. And that's that's stealing. Um, now, the problem and the, th the ethical questions and the confusion I get is, well, how is that different? Then if, see, I, okay, this is this is an ethical gray area because how is that different than if I buy a game, I ha I play it on a physical media, I give it to someone else, they play it on a physical media. I don't understand how it's different in that respect. Uh, the other question would be, well, if I charged access to someone, like let's say Bob knows that I buy a lot of games off the store. And let's say Bob wants in on that. If I say, hey, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll set you up, but how about you give me 100 bucks, and then you can have access to all my games. That's wrong. However, if I take the physical copy I own and I purchased and I put it on eBay and someone else buys it, that's fine. I don't owe anybody any money. So this game sharing is something we, we got to have a conversation about. Because ideally, if the people making the games, the studios, 
uh, the developers, everybody had their way, then every single individual person would buy a copy of the game and pay full price release day and then pay for their own PlayStation Plus and play for their own PlayStation. But, uh, you know, these developers, these industry people, these marketing people, they're they're all human beings too. And they run into the same issues at their house and they say, yeah, that's bullshit. But... I, I don't know where we end up landing on game sharing. I, I don't know. It's it's such a gray area. I think it's wrong to sit there and sell your PlayStation Plus activity and then make a profit on games that were given to you for free. But at the same time, these games would be free if this person had a PlayStation 5. Maybe this person with a PlayStation 5, uh, you know, they're trying to recoup some of their expenses because they bought it from a scalper for... $1,500 and they have no way to make up any of that money. So maybe they're a little pissed and they want to sell their PlayStation Plus whatever. Um, it's really no secret that PlayStation handled the release of the PlayStation 5 very poorly and it it's it's a problem. I mean, I you can say you know, COVID it hurt production. They're not saying it. They're saying that had no effect, which is obviously a lie. Um, allegedly. An alleged lie. I don't know if it is or not. I don't work there. But the the release and the fact that it was in no brick and mortar stores, uh, it's bad. It's it was a bad idea. It was a terrible idea. Uh, you could they could say that it was you know a way to protect people from waiting in lines and being bunched up like that during COVID, but that's horseshit. So let's bring it all back. Let's bring it all in to the thesis here. Is game sharing wrong? I think the way I talked myself around this issue, I think it's wrong if you're trying to sell something at a profit. If you say get eight games for free on PlayStation Plus that they handed you, and then you're charging someone to access those free games, even if it is on their account, that's wrong. Like you you shouldn't do that. But if you buy a digital game and you want to split it with someone, like let's say I buy a $60 game and Scientist is like, I'd like to play that. You want to go have these? I mean, we would do this with physical games. I, I remember doing this with people as well. Like let's both throw in 30. Um, one of us, whoever runs and gets the game and actually goes to the store to Best Buy or wherever, they play it first. And when they're done, they hand it to the other person and everyone's happy. Then, you know, you figure out who gets to keep it afterwards. But... I I I, th- I don't think that's wrong on digital. I don't think it's wrong if if you split a game with someone and then swap accounts and play it on your PlayStation that way. I don't know if that's wrong. I this is such an ethical gray area and it's interesting to talk through it because when I sat down to originally talk about this and originally work through this, um uh, in my head I was thinking that oh, it's wrong. Like this is like piracy. Like you're stealing from other people. But now that I'm actually taking this and applying it to uh, a real-world scenario, I don't know if I feel like it's that bad. Uh, that's not an official plotty time stance, I guess, because I don't know where history is going to land on this for stealing. Uh, but I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't know if it's that terrible. I think if you're reselling something you got for free, it's kind of shady. But you know, at the same time, what if what if you uh, put in some money and and you you go to Taco Bell and you you get a free box, you know, you you get their five dollar taco box, and you get a free PlayStation Five, and you're like, you know what? These are selling for fifteen hundred. I think I'm just gonna sell it, and then I'm just gonna wait so I can get my hands on one for five hundred bucks. Why is that okay? It's yours. It's your physical piece of property. You can do whatever you want with it at that point. Why is that completely okay? But game sharing and splitting money that way is wrong. Is it? Is it be? Is it because you got it for free? It's it's confusing. You know what? I would love to hear where all of you people fall on this. Is game sharing wrong? Is is it wrong or wrong or worse because it's digital? Is it worse because people got games for free and are now trying to sell them at a profit? Uh, where do you guys stand on this? Uh, we would love to hear what you think. Send us emails, plottytime at gmail.com. Like I said in all of our previous episodes, like Chump Slap has said, we have a 100% guaranteed response rate. And we are still sticking to that. We've replied to every single email everyone has ever sent us. I'm not guaranteeing that forever, but for now, we will answer you. 
Uh, if you want to get to us faster on the socials and really let us know, especially on this episode, how you feel about game sharing, reach out at Plotty Time on Instagram or Twitter. And then if you want to, you know, maybe uh, listen to us, uh, get around those work field filters, you know, check us out. Um, hop on over to YouTube, like and subscribe over there. It really helps us out. Let us know how you feel about game sharing. If it's wrong, you know, tell us about piracy too. Tell us about everything. Tell us, maybe just tell us how you feel. Or you want to send uh, any of that wild Trump slap fan fiction, you know where to send that. Playtime at gmail.com. Uh, so that does it for this one. I guess I talked myself into a hole and never figured out where I stand on this. So, I don't know. Sorry. Talk to you next time. Later. Later.